When the temple was in Jerusalem, the Jews would make a travel, a trip to uh, Jerusalem every single year. And once the temple was destroyed, uh, that, that stopped happening. They would have their local synagogue that, we, that they would go to. But since then, it's been a tradition that Jewish people once in their lifetime now go to Israel and to, uh, to see the temple. There was uh, a few Jewish men, and one, the first Jewish man sent his son uh, to Israel. And his son, it was the only time, his first time he went to Israel. And when he came back, he told his father that he, that he had converted and become Catholic. So his father was pretty upset by this. And so the second father then sent his son to Israel to make his once-in-a-lifetime pilgrimage. And he came back and he said, Dad, I have to tell you, I went there and I, I become Catholic. And the father was really upset. Now his second, now this other son had become Catholic. So the third one sent his son to Israel. And when the son came back to Israel, of course, he told his father, he said, Father, I don't know what to say, but I've become Catholic. So all three of them were really disappointed, and they decided that they would pray, and they would ask the Lord, how could he let this happen? And so they began praying and asking God how, why their sons became Catholic and you know, why, why that happened when they sent them to Israel. And God actually spoke to them, and he said, you're not going to believe this. I sent my son to Israel. <laughs> You could explain that to some of the people that didn't get it. The choir is a little slow. So oftentimes we are asked by our Protestant brothers and sisters, are you saved? Has anyone ever been asked that before? Raise your hand if you know how to respond to that. A couple of you do. Some of us might not know how to respond to that, right? First time that happened to me, I was in the seminary, and I was at a wedding, uh, wedding for my cousin, and there was a... Protestant minister was there, and he asked me if, if I was saved. Now, I just entered the seminary, and I hadn't learned too much about it yet, and so he asked me if I was saved, and I said, well, I don't, I, 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 I don't know. I mean, I trust, I hope so. I hope that God would save me, and he goes, you're saved. Just, just believe that, and I said, okay, um, and then I started to think about that throughout my life, and, and, and I know people probably ask you that same question, and you're not sure how to answer it. Well, the answer is yes, we are saved, because we hear this in the gospel today, just like the joke I was telling before. God sent his only son into the world so that he might save us and we might experience salvation. So salvation for us has already happened. When Jesus suffered, died, and rose from the dead, we have been saved. Now, the part that we struggle with our, with our Protestant brothers and sisters is that we are participants in that salvation. And what that means is that we can actually reject the gift of salvation. We can kind of turn God down from that gift of salvation. So the answer, if you want the quick answer, if somebody asks you, are you saved? You could say, I am saved in hope. And we hear that in the, in the second reading, that we are saved in hope. There's a beautiful document that Pope Benedict wrote called Space Salvi, and the name of that document comes from the, the book of, of a letter from St. James, and is that we are saved and hope. So I want to talk about what that means. So Martin Luther said that we are saved by faith alone. That was his big thing, and that was one of the, the rifts that was caused in our church, that we're saved by faith alone. Now, the interesting thing is nowhere in Scripture does it say that. It says we are saved by faith, and then it also says we're saved by faith and works, but nowhere does it say that we are saved by faith alone. And what's interesting is Martin Luther was sola scriptura, so he believed whatever is in scripture is exactly how you have to believe it, and however it is written is how you believe it, but faith alone was never written anywhere in scripture. So we hear this in the second reading. It talks about what this means. So St. Paul says, Brothers and sisters, God who is rich in mercy because he has great love for us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, brought us to life with Christ. So salvation happens even when we're dead in our transgressions. He brings us to life in Christ. And then he says, by grace you have been saved. Notice that? By grace you have been saved. Well, what is grace? Grace from, comes from the Latin word for gift, that salvation is a gift that we receive from God. And so the, the 
division there is between the Catholic and the Protestant faith, I don't think there is actually a division, because I think we mean the same things. They're saying that there's nothing that we can do that, that can earn our salvation. And we believe that too, that our salvation is a gift that we receive from God. So he goes on to say, by grace you have been saved, raised us up with him, and seated him in the heavens in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show his immeasurable riches of his grace in this kindness to us in Christ Jesus. So we are saved by grace. But what is grace? Grace is the free gift of God. So when you hear saved by faith alone, we could say we are saved by faith. It's a <laughs> gift that we're given by God. But we do believe that we participate in that in what I said. And that's why Catholics will often say we're saved by faith and works. We're not only saved by the faith that God gives us, but that we participate in some way with the works. So here's the interesting thing. It continues on. So it says, for by grace you have been saved. Again, by grace you have been saved. Through faith. And this is not from you. It's a gift from God. So we would agree right there. It's nothing that we do. It's not from us. It's a gift from God. And it's not from works so that no one may boast. This is the line they, they specifically focus on. It's not from works so that no one may boast. So our salvation is not just because of something that we do. But then it continues on. For we are his handiwork, created in Christ Jesus for good works that God has prepared in advance that we should live in them. So even this reading right here that is taken from, it says that we are not only saved by our faith, but we are created to do the good works of God. Well, then we hear in the, in the gospel today, it talks about faith and works even more. Jesus said, and this is the verdict, that the light came into the world, but the people preferred darkness because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come towards the light because his works might be exposed. So do you think our works are important after hearing this? Okay, thank you. Our works are important. <laughs> and then it says, whoever lives the truth comes to, li to the light so that his works may be clearly seen by God. So it is not just faith alone that we are saved. It is faith displayed in the works that we do. It is faith that is showing that the, the faith that we believe impacts our lives and that the salvation that we desire is worked out God with us, we're participants. We are saved only by everything that comes from him, and we call that grace. So if they ask you, are you saved by faith alone, you can say, I'm saved by grace alone. But grace is a working out of faith, which is a gift, and good works, which is a gift. And so we are saved by faith and good works, but all of that is grace. Hope I have you all very confused right now. <laughs> But I think it's important we know this and that we know how to answer because probably you'll be, up, you'll be put on the spot at some point in your life. If you haven't already, you will be. So the next time they ask, are you saved? First of all, you can say, yes, I'm saved in hope. And secondly, are you saved by faith alone? And the answer is, I'm saved by grace alone, which is faith and good works. It's good that we know our faith. And it's important that when we are asked these questions, we can actually give a good answer back and that we actually understand what they mean when they're asking the question, what we understand with, when we're asking the question, and what we truly believe. Our faith is important to us. We're going to profess the faith in just a few moments here together. It's so important that we know our faith. So when our faith is challenged, look into that. Do some homework. Ask me. Ask Google. Find out something more about our faith so that we can truly live it, believe it, and be able to teach it to other people.